Good morning to those of you who are here in church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us at our celebration of the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. We now enter into the season of Ordinary Time until the beginning of Lent on March 2nd. This month of ordinary time gives us a brief time of rest between the major seasons of Advent, Christmas, and Lent, Easter. Today's Gospel is the well-known story of Jesus changing water into wine at the wedding at Cana in Galilee. It is a metaphor for the abundant and savory life Jesus offers to all of us in our relationship with him. May we all allow Jesus to transform us to become worthy vessels of the grace-filled wine of his love and goodness. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without destruction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Francis, and the preacher is Brother Thaddeus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we enter now into the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, In the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you, and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations. Among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit 
produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told, uh, told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw out some of the water and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory and his disciples began to believe in him. Dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Today, Brother Thaddeus will give the reflection at the end of Mass. It's an opportunity that we have here at St. Dominic's to hear our uh, young students, our students who are in formation, to begin to address us on the Word of God. So we will wait until after Holy Communion uh, for Brother Thaddeus to give his, his homily. Let us stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the prophet Isaiah said in the first reading, our God delights and rejoices in us. We confidently come before him now with our needs this day. For all God's people, that we might enjoy the abundant life of love, joy, peace, and purpose that God wants us to have by allowing Jesus to continue to transform our lives as he transformed the water into wine. We pray to the Lord. For a greater recognition of the Spirit's gifts to us, so that we might utilize those gifts to encourage one another, to build up the body of Christ, and to serve those who are in need. We pray to the Lord. For the success of the various marches for life throughout the country during these weeks, and that the sanctity of all life would receive greater respect in our world. We pray to the Lord. That inspired by the example of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., racism and all forms of prejudice may cease and that each person may be treated with dignity and respect. We pray to the Lord that God would reward and protect from harm our first responders, medical workers, caretakers, and essential workers for an end to the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. For the repo eternal repose of Raimundo Tuando So, so whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions in our Book of Intentions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Holy God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, and the abundant life you offer us through Jesus Christ, our God and Savior forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health, and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, as we, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your, pray, in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands 
And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith. This holy mass we lift up to you, the soul of Raimundo Tuando, and all who rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you, be, you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And to all of you present and those participating on live stream, let us now turn to one another and exchange the sign of the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Communion Antiphon. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ.
And as I announced at the, uh, begin, at, after the gospel today, we now welcome Brother Thaddeus. Let us welcome him and, and uh, receive him to give our, our homily. Good morning. So, in our gospel reading today, we listen to the story of the wedding feast of Cana. And there is a great deal that one can say about that wedding feast, but I think that to begin to discuss it, we need to start by recognizing the significant fact that it is a part of the gospel of St. John. Now, John's gospel stands apart from the other three gospels in that it tells stories about Jesus Christ, which the other gospels do not, and generally has a very unique, perhaps call it intimate, take on the occurrences of the ministry of our Lord. But perhaps one of the most striking things about John's gospel is just how interconnected everything is. Once, one of my scripture professors explained it to me like this. You can view any of the books in scripture like a tapestry. When you pull on one passage, it is like a thread. It draws other threads up with it, and this has you scouring the the text. But John's gospel is a bit different. So often, when you pull at one of the threads in John, you end up bringing about the entire tapestry with you. So let's pull on a thread. The thread that I want to look at here today is the short little interaction between the headwaiter and the groom at the end of the reading. The headwaiter says, everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Well, I propose to you perhaps unsurprisingly, that the head waiter is by no means complimenting the generosity of the groom when he says this. No, he is rather admonishing him for acting imprudently or even selfishly. The head waiter is the person responsible for the distribution of things like wine, and so, in his position, he is dumbfounded why the groom would withhold better wine until late in the event. This is a wedding. One would expect the best foot to be put forward, and so, and I think justifiably, the head waiter is upset that, as far as he can tell, His job was thwarted by the groom's lack of planning or unusual storage of this superior wine. Of course, we know something that the head waiter does not know. This wine was not prepared by the groom of this wedding at all, but instead by Jesus Christ. And while the head waiter is upset by the situation he has found himself in, he is in fact part of a prophetic symbol, a sign, for the heavenly wedding feast which Jesus Christ is ushering in. Perhaps a way to better understand this symbol is in something more overt, found in the other three Gospels. There you have the parable of the old wineskins, which should not be filled with new wine lest they burst asunder. The takeaway of that parable, at least in its clearest form in the Gospel of St. Luke, at least I think it's the clearest, seems to be that there is a new covenant and that while the old covenant is good, The goodness of that old covenant may well prevent adherents of the Mosaic law from following or even investigating the new covenant offered. 
by Jesus Christ. And all of this is framed within the context of a wedding feast where Jesus is the bridegroom. So, the wedding feast of Cana proposes another angle for the same basic message. Like in the parable, the wine which the bridegroom at Cana offers is good, like the old wine of the old covenant. It's still wine, and it's not like we have a reason to doubt its quality. Only we can say that whatever its quality, it does not hold a candle to the new wine that Jesus Christ offers. It was a stark enough difference, after all, for the head waiter to come up and speak frankly with the groom, after all. So all well and good. But what does this really tell us about the new covenant? So it's better than the old, that's well and fine. But does this mean anything for us, who are already partakers of this new wine? And this is a keen question. So let's take a step back from this little interchange between the head waiter and the groom. Let's look back at what Jesus actually did during the wedding feast. Perhaps that will shed some light on this situation. And of course, he made water into wine. But there are two details about these water jugs which St. John makes explicit. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this, St. John's Gospel is shockingly interconnected with itself. And so whenever he includes details, we should pay close attention. He gives us two details here, both of which are a bit easy to just skim over. First, he tells us that these are jugs for ceremonial washing. This means they were part of the ritual cleansing that Jews were expected to perform in accordance with the Mosaic Law for a variety of activities, eating and drinking included. Second, he tells us that there are six jugs. Now. Six means something in the numerology that scripture uses throughout the Old and New Testaments. Six means incomplete. And the next number, seven, means complete. This is a flag that St. John is waving in our faces, indicating to us that we should be on the lookout for another container of water. Because what is happening at Cana is not the whole picture. It's still incomplete. It's still six, not yet seven. I propose to you that the seventh cleansing jug comes much later in St. John's Gospel, all the way at the Last Supper. It's the container that Jesus uses to clean the feet of his apostles. And this is where the rubber hits the road, so to speak. The miraculous wine at the wedding feast of Cana is intimately connected with cleansing water. This is, after all, the water it was changed from. And so, fittingly, there is a call being made here by the Lord to beseech each and every one of us to do as he does and to serve the needs of his servants. This serves as an appeal to works of mercy for all those who would partake of this new wine. And that would be simple enough. But Jesus transformed water intended to be poured out for the cleansing of the body into wine that is good to drink, to take inside of ourselves. So too, then, does this new covenant draw us in with the everlasting call of Jesus Christ, repent and believe in the gospel. For while the outward ritual purifications of the Jews were good, the inward purification of the soul is so much better. For while your outward self will again and again be soiled and need purification as you go about your daily life, until the day of your bodily death. The inward soul belts out its need for enduring justification in that great and infinite light that is the vision of God the Father in heaven. And so perhaps again, it comes as no surprise that we are talking about wine 
and wine that St. John helpfully connects to the Last Supper for us. Because whenever we speak of bread or of wine, The body and blood of Jesus Christ should be carefully considered. And in this case, I believe that this image that I have walked through with you today here finds its completion in the communion of our Lord Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist, in particular of the most precious blood. For it is in our reception of the Eucharist that our spiritual need for purification is met. Our souls strengthened against the temptations of the world and our sins, those which are not mortal, are washed away. This symbol then is deep, yet straightforward. We all have this call to serve. We all have this call to to repentance. It is in the realization of the unity of these two things that the wine at the wedding feast of Cana and the Eucharist for which it symbolizes blossoms forth in its profound beauty within this short reading. Serve those whom you have been put in power over. Let not your heart be soiled by the uncleanliness of sin and worldly vice, but rather repent and believe in the good news that God was made flesh to take away the sins of the world and to bring us back into communion with him. Make this resolution daily and cling close to the cup of that new wine poured out for each of you. For in it there is savor unlike anything that the world can offer. In it, there is redemption and salvation. Thank you, Brother Thaddeus. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, And in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, The announcements uh, are a little long. Please be seated so you don't get too tired. Okay. The Centennial Mass, the Centennial Mass will be on Sunday, February 20th at 10 o'clock in the morning. On February 20th, 10 o'clock is the only Mass that day. So uh, please participate by coming in person uh, early uh, or uh, participating on live stream. Um, And in order to celebrate, fittingly, the the, uh, centennial, on Saturday, January 29th, we are going to have a cleanup day. We definitely need volunteers. Please see the bulletin for details on how you can help prepare the church and the grounds for the celebration of our 100th anniversary. Tickets for the luncheon following the Centennial Mass are still available at the parish office. They are uh, available for purchase. Tickets are limited. Again, see the bulletin for details. Uh, Saturday, January 22nd, the Archdiocese of Los Angeles is sponsoring the annual Catholic Walk for Life. The Walk for Life. Flyers are available in the vestibule of the church for those interested in participating in that demonstration for the sanctity of life. St. Dominic's Uh, will be offering that very same day on uh, the 22nd of January, next Saturday, the um, uh, Virtus. Uh, Virtus is the uh, program for a safe environment, uh, protecting God's children. And so the space for that is also limited. Register for this class by signing up at the parish office um, and do so by this Wednesday. Uh, See the bulletin for details. The nurse who comes from the 
Queen's Care, uh, she, uh, will, uh, they, they continue to offer COVID booster shots every Thursday from 8 in the morning until noon. Brother Thaddeus will begin a series on exploring the Eucharist. It is aimed at young adults uh, from the ages of 18 to 39. If you are a young adult uh, or if you have friends who are young adults would like to learn about the faith and particularly about the central experience of Catholic Holy Communion, the sacrament of communion, um, come uh, to, this, to these talks. It begins on uh, Thursday, the 27th of January, January 27. More information in the bulletin. And then uh, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Day, so the office will be closed. There will be only one Mass tomorrow at 9 in the morning, and we, uh, hopefully that everyone will have a safe three-day weekend uh, the, uh, the, for the holiday for Martin Luther King. <clears throat> Let us stand for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. The peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.